Dave Stokes. I'm a community manager from ISQL. For those of you who have certifications, either from the old AB or Sundays, um, I was a certification manager for a while. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm david.stokes at oracle.com. My Twitter handle is Stoker. Unfortunately, Nicole Kinman came out with a movie called Stoker. So if you see tweets referring to red hair, nudity, or bad acting, it's unfortunately not me. Aha, uh -huh, you're the person at the door. I'm going to get it? Okay, yes, please. You can continue. So, why am I here tonight? Well, first of all, I, I love the user groups. I try to talk to as many as I can during a year. The uh, heart of MySQL is the community, and we know that you guys wonder, what the heck is Oracle doing these days? You don't have to keep panning on me if you don't want, you're going to get uh, tired. Let's see if this works. Uh, first thing, safe harbor statement. Oracle requires this. I'm talking about stuff in 5.7. 5.7 is not GA or generally available. So whatever I talk about, a new feature, take it with a grain of salt. If I say it's blue, what do you think it's sky blue? And I'm thinking cerulean blue, and it ends up being royal navy blue. Um, that's the way things happen. So, why are we coming out with another version? Everyone loves 5.6, it's all perfect and you're all happy with it, right? How many of you are running 5.5? Five, 5.6? Five? Five, 5.1? Five, 5.0? Oh? Sure, why not? Uh, hopefully nothing more than that. Well, as Peter will mention later, um, MySQL isn't perfect yet, so we keep trying to evolve it. Uh, we're trying to make the performance better, and we've, we're doing pretty well there. Uh, we want to get rid of metadata locks, do better transactions, make it easier to make change, change, schema changes on the fly, and clean up everything. And over the years, um, MySQL's, the code base has been kind of uh, <coughs> needing a good refreshing, so we're, we're doing that. I'll talk about that. So, with that being said, a new version of MySQL always brings in new features and breaks old things. Uh, we know some of the things we're breaking now, and we want to get your buy-in, we want to get your concerns, and we want to get your feedback. Um, we know upgrading is painful. Uh, for those of you who did the 5.0 to 5.1 upgrade, we're sorry. <laughs> it was a lot more painful than we ever thought. 5.1 uh, to 5.5 was a very simple upgrade. Got you roughly 20, 25% better throughput. Uh, 5.1 to 5.6, another 15%. Uh, fairly innocuous upgrade for the most cases. Um, the DMRs that we have for 5.7 is a fairly simple upgrade, but we do change things, especially for those of you who dig into the user table in the MySQL database. So, we're so trying to be as careful as possible. Did you do? Did you write care fuel on purpose? Uh, no, I did that on an airplane as the lady was reclining on me. <laughs> no, I think, but it, but it's interesting that you have it, you're being as care fuel as possible to make this right. Yeah, correct. correct. Uh, that, that's my that's my dyslexic fingers. Um, we're trying to give you folks as much notice as possible. We're trying to get on a two-year release cycle. Uh, five six has been out for a year and a half, which means sometime next year, knock on wood, we'll have a version of five seven ready for you. And this time, we want to let you know why we're making some of the changes, and we want to get your feedback before it bites you. Uh, one of the things you hear in the PHP community is, "Oh my God, I'm using." MySQL throws away half my data. It puts all zero dates in my date column. <coughs> it has a whole bunch of other bad behaviors. Well, one of the things we did in the early days is we set the SQL mode to be fairly permissive. permissive. Um, so we're going to change some behaviors, like you'll see about strict mode later. We also want to give you folks heads up on things that are going away. Um, how many folks run by default in strict mode in their shop? That's what you're taught. Um, I came from a database background where you ran it as strict as possible and made sure that everything was double checked before it went in. Um, one of our proposals is add only full group to the group by clause. For most of you, this won't make any change because you're writing perfect SQL. 
for those of you who are not writing perfect SQL, um, in the past we've been guessing on when you do a group by, when you do a select with a group by, if there's multiple values for a column that's not on the group by, it will guess the best one. So if you have something like an item number and a description, and let's say a price, and you go to group by price, and the descriptions could be a TV, a car, or a piano, and they're all the same price, and you group by price, they'll pick either car, piano, or TV. Um, not always optimally. <coughs> replication. 5.6 replication has been a big step forward. I don't know how many of you are running with GTIDs, but when you need to start up a new slave, it's easier now to say, okay, here's my master, have it start at the first record, have it catch up with the global transaction of these. Away you go, you no longer have to play, okay, where am I in this log and where am I in that log and where do I get everything going? Now with 5.7, we want to make the, the default, uh, turn on the bin, bin log, put the master info in a table, and put the relay log information <coughs> in a table. Well, why is that? If log files are, are good enough for grandfather, why aren't they good enough for me? Well, in ODB, when it crashes, knows how to rebuild itself. Sometimes things get lost in log files. So we found with 5.6 that if you put it in in ODB, when it, NOB, in ODB rebuilds itself, it knows exactly where it made the last transaction. And you don't have to worry about that log file didn't get the last I.O. Something we also want feedback on is the show engine in ODB mutex. We've been making big advances in the performance schema, and this kind of is a duplicate, and the show engine in ODB mutex is a part of the SQL standard, so we figure, well, if we have it someplace else, let's deprecate it for right now and see how it goes. And we also want to get rid of the NODB monitor tables. I don't know how many of you have ever played with those, but it's a small percentage in the world. I guess that doesn't include the show engine and the status, right? So that's Not as of yet, no. Okay. And that's something we'll probably have to keep for several releases down the road. So used to it. And it's in that big red and white book from O'Reilly that somebody wrote. Uh, other things, make strict mode the default SQL mode. As I mentioned earlier, the PHP world and a little bit of the Ruby world, oh my god, my SQL just puts zeros in my data when it's not formatted right. How dare it do that? I have a car 15 I'm printing to try to put it in a car 10 field. Look, she has someone else at the door. Can... Oh. So what we want to do is into strict mode, add in error for division by zero, no zero date, and no zero end date. And have that be the default mode. Uh, what does this break? WordPress. How many of you run WordPress? <laughs> Uh, we're working with the WordPress folks very heavily and trying to get this straightened out. Um, it looks like the workaround for WordPress will be that they don't use strict mode by default. Now, we've been playing with Drupal, Joomla, and a couple other packages, trying to find out where this is going to play get you. But we know for, for a fact right now, this doesn't work with WordPress. So we'll have little notes in the release notes about if you're running WordPress, set this. Is that something that can be done by the by the client when it's beginning? Yeah. Really auto -connect? Yeah, you can put it in your config file, or you can change it per session. Okay. Um, two other things that we want to deprecate: explain partitions and explain extended. Um, explain extended is probably the only one in here that's probably been used by anyone in this room. It shows you the, what the optimizer thinks it wants to run as a query when you run explain. Um, we're just going to roll that in. Uh, by the way, I was going to try to show virtual explain tonight, but I can show you on my laptop on my other boot partition. Unfortunately, my Ubuntu doesn't work with this monitor. Uh, the new visual explain is a lot better. It gives you wonderful graphics that shows you what the explain is. It also shows you the JSON output, which lets you see where the optimizer made choices on which indexes to use and how to chop up your query to get it to perform. When you say explain partitions, the output is still going to show you where the partitions are. The output is going to have the default out there for the partitions. 
So is if you're using part in JSON or is it going to change the default explain? It's going to be in the old ASCII format explain and it's going to be in the JSON. Um, Peter's probably the only one who probably ever has in here has played with alter ignore table. It's a vicious command. Uh, we want to get rid of it. Um, it will silently drop rows for you in ways that are somewhat unpredictable. Uh, we got deprecated in five, that should be five, seven, three, and we removed it in uh, the DMR about to come out. This is something that only MySQL used, so it's not violating any standard things. And it wasn't a, a very popular command anyway, but if you're using it, you might love it. Query cache. When I started with MySQL back in the 321 days, query cache was a great idea because if you were running the same query, it was already out there, it was cached, the way things run. Well, with memcached and a whole bunch of other things, um, a lot of sites were noticing that the query cache wasn't really adding anything in there. A lot of people realized, gee, if I'm running the same query over and over and over again, I ought to stick that in a cubby hole of my application. So with 5.6, we disabled it. Now the question is, has that bitten anyone in the butt? By the way, you still turned it on. Uh, any objections, any feedback? So does your plan for other options and later releases means uh, there would be MySQL Enterprise extension with advanced MySQL query cache option? Um, there might be, I don't know what they're planning. Okay. 99% um, of what I'm talking about tonight is the community edition, the free edition. Um, for the Enterprise Edition, they play pretty close to the best. I'm not quite sure what they want to do. Um, I've, I've heard talks of, well, gee, maybe certain classes of queries get cached, but I have no idea, and that's just kind of hearsay. That I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Used to be able to have a synonym for null as backslash n. I've never seen anyone use this, never heard anyone using it. I had to look it up in the manual. So we're hoping that if we deprecate this, it won't blow anybody <laughs> out of the water. Um, if it is something you use heavily, let me know. And, uh, and deprecate, that means just it's going to write a lot of stuff in your log files, right? Yeah, and send you warnings, messages. Yeah. So it will still work. Yeah, it'll I'll still work. Have a nice yeah, but sometime in 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, You'll find that it doesn't work. Federated storage engine uh, was a great idea four, five, six, seven, eight releases ago. Uh, there are a few people still lose, use it out there. Uh, merge storage engine, kind of the same. Um, big trouble is not a lot of folks use them, and there's really not enough economic involvement in the community to really want this. Now, if you really Oh my God, everything I do does this. And I, if Dave, if this goes away, airplanes are going to fall out of the sky and sewer systems will erupt and the sun won't rise on Friday morning. Uh, let me know and I'll send off a request to engineering. I use merge tables. Um, any okay. special reason or? Um, easily, uh, we merge tables can easily but uh, quickly be changed so that they overlap with different tables. So mm -hmm. we're not constantly moving them ahead each day. So that's a different time range. Okay. The data showing up when you include the same table. Yeah, so that's like a missing point, right, from partitions, because you cannot have a two partitions share the same the same kind of base. Yeah. yeah. So I'll make a note of that and pass that on. Mm -hmm. I uh, tend to put odd slides in my presentations just to make sure the audience is awake. Okay, so what has the engineers at Oracle been doing for MySQL? Well, we've been trying to get rid of bugs. Uh, we have 191 work logs for 5.6. And as you can see, we killed off 191 bugs. Uh, I'm not sure what the numbers are for 5.7. Uh, we've had 3,763 verified bugs since 5.5 came out. And we've had almost a thousand new releases that go and run in our daily runs. 
and this is 3,000 is it how many have been fixed or how many have been discovered? Verified. Uh, verified. Oh. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them end up being, you know, something like, yeah, this is a problem or, or this is something we're going to get to or something that this is the way how to do it, you know, how to work around it. So we've been busy. We know we're not perfect. We're getting there. Uh, we've made a big in increase in our QA team. We're the biggest QA team ever. And they do a hell of a job trying to keep everything, keep the wheels on the boat as we go down the, or the boat in the ocean as we go down the waves. We also came out with YAM repositories. I don't know how many of you are tight with the folks who run the various distros. Um, they have the old story of the Dutch boy with, with the dike leaking, trying to put the fingers and toes in the holes. Um, a lot of the things like the long range Ubuntu's, they don't want anything to change. They say, we're going to run it this way for five years, so don't change anything. Yeah, we'll get bug and security, performance fixes and new releases and all that. Uh, we've worked very tightly with the Ubuntu folks so that they're going to take our stuff as we update it and, and load it in. Uh, maybe jump through some hoops there. Uh, with the Red Hat folks, um, they say, well, we're going to run Red, we're going to run MySQL 5.1 forever. And uh, we say, mm, guys, that's not a great idea. You know, 5.5 is a lot better, 5.6 is a lot better, 5.7 is going to be even better. <coughs> but we don't care. We want to have the nice, stable platform. Anyway, a lot of the customers say, well, that's great, but I need the latest and greatest. So we come up with young repositories. So if you're running CentOS or Red Hat or um, the uh, Linux version, uh, you can get repositories with Yum that will download and work perfectly. So the, how does that uh, place compatibility-wise with for what they have? Let's say, would uh, uh, Red Hat ship PHP continue working if you update the MySQL packages? <coughs> um, usually. I know of one edge case with, with the latest PHP, I think 5.6 mm -hmm. or something. Um, scramble something, but I, that's a workaround with, a, with one of their session variables. Okay, because that's I mean that's some the, the dependencies can be quite tricky if they rely on the yeah, void libraries. And no matter what you do, is it screws up postfix. I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, postfix is one of the wonderful parts. Yeah. Why? I, I don't know. Every time I've touched an RPM box in the past two years, you you log into it, and you screw up postfix somehow. Uh, by the way, this includes the connectors and includes the workbench. <coughs> And if you're not using Workbench, uh, download it. It's free. It's our number two download. It's a wonderful tool. It's a query tool. Uh, it's an entity relationship mapper. So you walk in cold to someone's site and you've never seen their schemas before. It gives you a nice, wonderful relation map. shows you where the foreign keys point to. Uh, you can make changes, add columns, and roll them back out. And it's also a wonderful sysadmin tool. Um, quick question. Do you have, ever have like official package, package? Um, yeah. Um, you're going to see the Ubuntu ones fairly shortly, and the dev should be pretty close to that. Okay. I know there's some slight differences now between dev and Ubuntu. And oh, you little know what Yeah. So, benchmarks. Um, I don't have a pretty graph because I don't think anyone actually buys or upgrades according to graphs. Uh, but with running Sysbench, we were able to, with 5.7, get roughly 500,000 queries per second with 64 concurrent user sessions, uh, which is faster than 5.6 and 5.5. Uh, if you're using our NODB NoSQL plugin, which lets you get the same data via memcached or SQL at the same time. Gives you a persistent memcache store if you want to run it that way. Uh, extremely fast. If you don't have to optimize your queries and you don't have to parse the SQL, you can get some amazing speed. Uh, you'll see here's some benchmarks coming up from MySQL cluster that are just jaw-droppingly fast. Uh, but if you're look if you're already running memcache, uh, this might be a way to get into the NoSQL world without having to go out and buy another set of disks for your, for your servers. Okay, um, for those of you who know Monty, 
and the sky crew, this is the slide they can't see. Um, they keep saying, we have no idea what MySQL is doing. They never tell us, they never publicize what we're doing. I've had this in my slide deck for a year and a half. Uh, this is what our engineering team has as its priorities. Uh, we're gonna be optimized for the web, the cloud, and embedded cases. Uh, we're trying to simplify the architecture. Um, we're gonna make it easier to extend it, and we're gonna give you a lot more NoSQL options. We're refactoring the code. Uh, we're gonna have a data dictionary, which will give you some uh, ease of moving data around and accessing data between tables that will be rather impressive. And we keep driving the optimizer parser and protocol team. Um, Oracle is, is basing everything on InnoDB. So if you love MyISAM, uh, consider moving over. MyISAM is now much slower than InnoDB. We're optimizing things for solid state disks. Uh, you're going to see a lot more stuff for GIS. Um, I've been screaming for the past four years about GIS because I know a lot of folks who are running Postgres who want to get off Postgres but can't because they're stuck with close <coughs> GIS. Uh, we also want to make it easier to do high availability replication and sharding. Uh, something that we announced last year that you're going to hear more about is something called Fabric. Uh, Fabric is going to be a, a tool where you say, okay, here's my data, I want to shard it this way, and I will go out and take care of it for you over a bank of servers. And then six months later, your boss wants to change the schema, he wants to reach, change the shards. Uh, with Fabric, you'll be able to say, okay, change it, and we'll do it for you on the fly. Uh, that's an alpha right now. Uh, please go out there and break it. Please give us feedback, because we want to know how you want to use it. Make sure that it works for you. Can I uh, ask you something here? Uh, oh, one thing that I was getting a lot of feedback is uh, in terms of getting kind of uh, a little bit up to speed of uh, SQL features, right? Uh, for example, uh, their functions or hierarchical queries, right? Like with uh, windowing functions, that's another thing that people are uh, still saying. I think uh, from in terms of their SQL features, actually, they, uh, those MySQL hasn't added anything for like, is it like since, since 5.1 or 5.5? Is there any? Uh, I know it's on the engineering to-do list, but I don't know where it is. Um, I don't know if it's gonna show up in 5.7. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're getting a lot of statistical uh, functional requests. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about Windows, um, but I know. Well, that's uh, yeah. from that side, right, all, all those. Yeah. Time sensitive statistical functions. Okay. And the other thing we're hoping to do by cleaning up the architecture is make it real easy so if someone wants to write a stat package, you know, put basically MATLAB on top of MySQL, where you go. Um, connections per, per second. Um, performance schema is our way of tracking things going on. Uh, there's a little bit of overhead to running it, uh, between 3 and 5% on most installations. And it actually gives you the granularity so you can figure out who's hogging your files, who's sucking up memory, who's making the most requests, uh, where the locks are. Uh, with 5.7 you'll be able to find out where the metal locks are. Uh, if you're running with performance schema, these numbers are with performance schema and without, um, you can see we're trying to bump up the connections per sec second. Uh, if that's not good enough for you, uh, see Peter or get our enterprise version. By the way, the enterprise version is free for 30 days. It doesn't have a time bomb, so you need to run it for 32 days. Uh, I also mentioned that in case you ever have a big problem, run the MySQL Enterprise Monitor and the uh, Query analysis Analyzer. Uh, run it for a couple weeks, see if you really like it. If you really like it, pay for it. If not, uh, back it out. Uh, but the Facebook folks have been trying to get more and more connections per second for some reason. Do they just pay $19 billion for some company? What's that? <laughs> $19 billion? Isn't it like the, that's like the number seven economy in the world? <laughs> General Motors. Yeah. Um, optimizer, I can show you this later. Uh, unfortunately, my Windows partition doesn't have the latest version of Workbench on there. 
Um, yeah. Then you speak about this uh, thirty-day trial. Uh, do you know if there is uh, any restrictions for people to publish results? They get it much to enterprise. I know, like some big Oracle had restrictions about what you would publish in terms of benchmarks and everything. Uh, I'm not aware of it, but then I, I'm not really bound by license terms. Employees, I have other terms. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to check in with the with the powers that be up at Redwood Shores. Oh, okay. There, 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 there might be something that you. Yeah, I think that's a that's kind of a change. Why we haven't been careful looking at the enterprise features. Yeah. Because and 99% of the code in the enterprise, if you held the two things up to the light, uh, the only thing you might see is a change in the header files. Uh, the other things like the enterprise monitor and backup where you find things. Uh, optimizer. Uh, we've been putting the output into JSON, which is easier to parse, and I can show you some visual explain pictures. Uh, it shows you the cost now of what the various choices are. Um, also gives you better traces. The traces will show you, okay, I picked this index over this index because the cost came back for this, this amount of seconds for what's going on. Uh, for those of you who love the in uh, statement syntax, uh, we've improved the heck out of that. And if you're using non-sorted fields in a sort buffer, we can, we can pack it, which makes it a little bit faster and keeps things from going out to disks. Uh, performance schema. Uh, if you haven't played with it, a gentleman named Mark Leaf has a performance schema helper. Schema helper. Uh, start there. It gives you the first steps to start seeing what your system is really, really doing. 99% uh, of the DBAs out there probably don't have to get the last 2% out of the query. Uh, if you do, or your boss really wants to know who's using up all the memory or who's, who's taking all the locks, this is where you want to go. Uh, InnoDB. Uh, I used to use Percona Toolkit, back when it's called MapKit. Uh, one of the great features that Percona Toolkit has is a way to change your schemas online. Uh, if you haven't done it with standard MySQL, uh, in the older versions what would happen is MySQL would make a copy of your, new t of your old table and start making the changes locking up the old table. And it could take seconds, hours, days, weeks, and it wasn't very efficient. So we've been trying to make sure that those of you who do DDL online, um, it's now less painful. Um, we're also letting you do some checksums. Um, that should be table spaces bigger than two gigabytes up there. And what is that? That does that mean? Because I mean, you would have table space more than two gigabytes or three gigabytes for years. Um, I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at my notes. Could be table space for just check something out. I can't do that. I'll have to go look that up. It does look odd. It would be temp tables. Um, we now have a separate table space for temp tables. Let you do add and drop a lot faster. And uh, for this online alter, did you guys fix uh, online the table view org in 5.7? I think it's in there, but I'm not sure. So you can do optimize table online. I'll have to double check. Uh, optimize lots with no DB? Well, yeah, but uh, it wouldn't be online, right? It would or you could like, do a null output table, but that wasn't working in, uh, as online in 5.6 Yeah, I, I think that's there, but I, I'm not sure. Um, we're also doing undo logs and temp table spaces. With another misspelling. And then you're speaking undo logs and temp, temp table spaces. What, what do you mean by that? Well, we, um, we have a separate table space for temporary tables, that's off by itself. And if you put the redo logs in there, there's some big performance gain because you're not. Because I remember uh, what uh, Ina was saying about uh, disabling redo logs for temporary tables because you don't need them because they go on the restart, uh, restart anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and talk to the engineers. Uh, 
Uh, this is my crim notes from what they were. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, let's, let's just, uh, <laughs> um, no, keep going. Um, um, replication. Uh, we're getting higher slave throughput. Uh, you'll be able to have multiple masters feeding into one slave. Um, we're enhancing semi sync, where instead of just having one waiting for one slave to acknowledge back, you can actually have two out of 10 or three out of 40 that will actually uh, say, yeah, I've got the data before letting the master proceed. Uh, we have more information and performance schema on replication. Uh, for those of you who run MySQL bin log for uh, restoring s stuff, uh, we finally put the hooks in for SSL. That was kind of like, a, whoa, we haven't done that before. Uh, you'll also be able to change replication filters on the fly. So if you suddenly realize that, oh my god, all the accounting files have been been backed up to the accounting slave. Now on the uh, fly, you can say, okay, get everything over there. We don't need to start and stop. So uh, you have uh, you have multi-source replication, right? Right. Now. Yeah. Now, uh, do f uh, do filters? Can different filters exist with different sources, right? Uh, they should be able to. Yeah. So you can replicate only portions from different sources. Yeah, it should be able to. I haven't played with that yet. But. Um, Excuse me, is multi-source only available in 5.7 or it's also available in 5.6? Um, it's going to be only, it's going to start with 5.7 okay. that we support. Um, let me see if I can skip that. Um, triggers. We've had a lot of requests for enhancing our triggers. It's a horrible sound, isn't it? Um, the other thing is once you get multiple triggers, you have to figure out, okay, how do you organize the triggers in execution order? And also if you have column constraints, uh, we now check up the end of trigger execution. Uh, in the past, if something fell out, uh, like you're trying to put a 10 characters in a five character field, uh, it would bomb out at the wrong time. And triggers are still going to be their, their role, right? Uh, not their... Per row, yeah. So other times, not not support yet. Yeah. Error logging. We're going to have three levels of error logging. Um, you'll be able to set the set that on the fly or in your defaults table. And we're going to um, you can have the timestamps either be the system time or the UTC. Okay, where do you learn more? Um, go to mysql.com. Question about the previous slide. Uh, uh, are the, um, uh, the incompatible uh, replication uh, now uh, a warning or an error? Uh, in the 5.5 version, you get a lot of uh, unsafe uh, statement, unsafe for replication. And so yeah. is that still uh, an error or is it now a warning? Um, I think it's still going to stay an error. Okay. Are you using row or statement? We're kind of doing, doing both, and it's uh, in some of the cases where we can't change it quickly enough, it's sort of a pain because the error logs grow uh, very, very large, and we have a lot of systems, so it takes a while to, to cycle through them yeah. and you, fix all the statements. Can you go to 5.6 and use mixed? Uh, possibly, not quite, not quite ready yet. Okay. Um, so like I said, you probably all know MySQL.com fairly well. Uh, Planet.MySQL.com is a blog aggregation site. It has our information, Percona's information, Maria's information, uh, other folks in the community's information on what they're doing, things they found, where they're going to be, uh, interesting tricks, interesting tips, uh, screeches about bugs. Uh, if you're not reading that every day, uh, you should tr take a peek at it. Uh, agedelivery.oracle.com is where you can go if you want the commercial versions. Um, the training folks wanted me to let you know that they do have MySQL 5.6 training. Uh, we've also just started 5.6 certification for developer and DBA. Uh, I can tell you the 5.6 DBA exam is a killer. Um, I used to write exams for MySQL and the folks who've done this one have done a great job. It's much more depth than the old ones. There's, I would say there's no tricky questions. There's a lot of questions you're gonna go, where the heck did they pull that out from? 
and I've been using the product for almost since the day it came out. Um, so if you want to really get a 5 6 certification, it's just ended beta period, it should go into production pretty soon, and you better know everything about MySQL. Thank you all. See you all at scale. Hi. Well, thank you, David.